Hello, this is Kate. I'm Wooly Faye. Welcome back to my channel. This is the second in a two-part tutorial on the Easy Mosaic Square Pattern. In the first tutorial, we looked at how to read a pattern. Now, the reason I did that is because I meet a lot of people who've never purchased a pattern and are very intimidated by what they do not understand. Some of them feel like it's just gibberish. So I just kind of wanted to break the ice with those people, help them understand how to read one. So now in this second one, what we're going to do is we're going to construct a swatch of this pattern from start to finish. Now we're not going to do the whole blanket. Let me just be very clear. When I say swatch, it'll be a miniature version of the blanket, but we are going to start from the first chain stitches all the way to the end and even apply a double sided border for those who don't like the fringe. So you'll get everything you need from this tutorial. It is the simplest pattern I could come up with. I wrote it, I put it on my Ravelry and Etsy store. For those who actually want a copy of it, you can purchase it for $2.50. And the best way to find it is to go to woollyfay.wordpress.com on the homepage. You'll have links to everything you need there. Before this tutorial, you, you will be able to follow along without that. So let's just go ahead now and start. We'll be referring back to the pattern as we go and we will also be referring back to the graph. So that will bring those two elements together for you. For this tutorial, you're gonna need two shades of yarn. I'm gonna be using the charcoal gray for my color A and the lavender for my color B. Now the pattern does call for a light worsted DK weight yarn, but I don't want you to focus too much on that. Use whatever you have at your disposal and just be sure to use an appropriately sized hook for whatever yarn weight you're using. Because I am using the recommended weight yarn, I am now using a four point because this is polyester. On the acrylic, I would have used a 3.5 as the pattern suggested. You're also going to want a pair of clippers and then at the end of the tutorial, you can opt to weave your tail in. It's entirely up to you, but if so, you're going to want a yarn needle. So what you need to do now is to go ahead and create your slip knot and chain 32. Okay, so if you have created your foundation chain, we're gonna move on, but before we do, I just wanna point out to you that I have set up this pattern so that we are working the, the side and then we're moving up all the way to the other side. Now the reason I did that is because when you work mosaic overlay, you'll get fringe on both sides of the blanket. So that fringe, I feel like, should go top and bottom. Now with some patterns, you just can't do that, but I don't really like, and I know a lot of people don't either, either having fringe coming out the sides of the blankets. That to me is just, um, not the way French should be. <laughs> so um, what I like to do with patterns that are mosaic overlay is to run the whole pattern along the side and work up to the other side. Okay, so this is actually going to be the long side. This is going to be the top and bottom on these sides and the fringe is going to come out there. Going to make more sense to you what as you're going to want to do now is to go into the back bump of every chain and that's what this says work one single crochet into the back bump of every chain beginning with the second chain from the hook and then we're going to fasten off now i want you to wait on me when you get to that point because i want to walk you through it but in order to work a single crochet into the back bump i want to go ahead and show you in case you didn't watch the the tutorials on how to crochet you have a flat side okay here if you turn the chain over this side has bumps on it you see those little ridges those are what you call the back bump so you're going to find the second one on your foundation chain that'll be the second one from your hook that will be right here now if you can't see that first bump it's kind of hidden up in here right there but if you just right in there see but if you can't see it one of the other way to tell is to actually look at the side and you can see see the, the little chains where they're formed so you are actually going to go into the second one which will be right here 
on that foundation chain up under that bump okay we're gonna go do it again see those bumps there on those ridges you're gonna go up under the bump like that and complete a single crochet stitch now let me get through there go to the next one and do the same thing and sometimes there they go time to work them in we're gonna do that with every single one again all you need to do is just pause that video get them in there and then when you're finished wait on me at the end and we'll do the final step on this row together so just pause the video hit play when you're ready to resume okay so if you have completed the foundation row with a single crochet into the back bump of every chain stitch then the last thing you're going to do you're going to complete that final stitch i kind of waited on you two there to proceed and then what i want you to do is chain two you're going to take your clippers at this point and just clip off down below like that, okay? Take your hook, pull it up until it releases that tail. You're going to put your, pinch your fingers over the top of that chain too, and then just slide down. That will form a knot. So you've completed that and you're not going to turn your work. So just take your fingers and move on along over here like this. And go ahead and slide your hook up under that first stitch. Now, it's important to note here, later on you may find yourself trying to work into one of the side loops or something. So always when you're looking at the stitch, you are looking for the little V on it, okay? You're looking for two loops at the top that kind of form a little bit of a V right there. So if you don't have those two loops forming that little design there, you're not going into the right spot. On the far right-hand side or left-hand side, if you are left-handed, you should always be able to see th those stitches all look the same. Be sure you're going into the right place, that's the point. Now in this case, we're gonna be adding gray one more time. So let's take a look at this and go ahead and take a look at the graph and the instructions. Okay, so the instructions say row two, color A, and I added that other color, but I pulled it out so I can slow down and show you again, okay? But the first thing it says is to attach the yarn to the first stitch, which is what we're about to do. But I want to go and look at this graph first, which is why I pulled it out, because I want to kind of clarify something for you, all right? In the key, in the graph key, it says the empty boxes are single crochet into the back loop only. As you can see, there are plenty of boxes here that are empty, because if it has an X in it, that's a dip down double crochet. So the key on our um, pattern, which is covered in the uh, first a part of this tutorial but the key um, shows that if there's an X you dip down and if the box is empty then we back loop single crochet that rule does not apply to the first and the last stitch you're always going to work under both loops on the first and last stitch now remember that on the graph we work from the bottom to the top so these rows are numbered one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and so on so this is going to be the first row that we work and of course it's going to be color a and we're going to be working from the right side to the left side okay and of course i've marked them on this side as well but you always work from the bottom to the top from the right to the left so this first stitch is empty it might indicate if you don't understand mosaic overlay that you would put that into the back loop but on the first and the last stitch you always work under both loops so let's just go ahead now looking at the pattern instructions we attach the yarn to the first stitch we do that under both loops because it is the first stitch we it's where we attach yarn every single time 
The way you do that, and I'm just going to slow down and do it again, is you grab the yarn and pull it through. So you're pulling up a single loop under that first stitch. Then you're going to chain one. You're going to go back into the same stitch, not moving to the next one, back into that first stitch again. Insert your hook, pull up another loop. You have two loops on your hook. You're going to complete a single crochet stitch. You will do that every single row when you attach your yarn. Every single row will go through that same one. From that point only, you'll look at your graph, and if the graph is blank, you will do a back loop single crochet. If the cell or the block is blank, and if there's an X in it, then you're going to do a dip down. You'll understand that more as we go. But as you can see on this graph, the entire row is blank. We don't do any dip down. Now this is actually the foundation row that we did. We're actually working row two right here, starting on this side, row two. It is again color A, and all of those are blank as well. So those are going to be back loop single crochet stitches. So you're going to look and on your stitches, on your single crochet stitches that you've done for your foundation row, and every row thereafter, you're going to see that you have a front loop and a back loop, front loop and a back loop. You are going to insert your hook under the back loop. You're going to pull up a loop. You're gonna complete a single crochet. Now, it's very important that you do the back loop. You don't try to go under both loops because if you do that, you won't be able to do the dip down double crochet stitch that you have to do when we start doing our collar path, okay? You're going to need those loops. It's critical that you go into the back loop. So we're going to do that all the way down to the final stitch. So go ahead, work as slowly as you need to. You can just hit pause and then hit play when you're ready to resume and we'll continue from there. Again, we're going to fasten off, but go ahead and wait on me so we can walk through it together. Okay, so now I have one stitch left on my row right here. You're going to insert your hook under both loops. Remember, we do that first and last stitch on the row. Pull up a loop and complete a single crochet. You're going to chain two the way I showed you before you're going to clip that off pull your hook up to release that tail grab it above the chain and slide down now I like to go ahead because I like shorter fringe and clip those off like that as I go so that they don't start getting in my way you're going to come across on the same side again and insert the hook underneath both loops. So what we're going to do now is we're going to grab our color B, which if you recall was the lavender, all right? And we're going to add that color B under that first stitch on the same side and be sure that you're working the right side don't turn your work you can see the difference in the way it looks so at this point you should be able to see clearly which side you're supposed to be working all right and you're just going to do the exact same thing you did with color a previous row you're going to grab the yarn and pull up a loop you're going to chain one you're going to insert the hook into the very same stitch up another loop complete a single crochet stitch in this case we're working a swatch be 29 stitches into the back loop so let's just go ahead and do that up under the back loop where I showed you before leave the front loop alone complete a single crochet you're going to do that all the way down to the final stitch under the back loop pull up a loop and single crochet 
and you should have a line of front loops still exposed right here. So go ahead and do that. Hit pause when you're ready. Hit play and we will resume. Now we've come to the final stitch and it's exactly as it was on the previous row. It will be this way for every single row. You are going to go up under both loops, pull up a loop and complete a single crochet stitch. And once again, chain two. You're going to clip that off. Pull the hook up until you release the tail. Put your fingers over the cinch knot and slide that down to form a knot. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and pull this graph back up and we're going to take a look at it before we move on. We're going to be looking at the graph and the written pattern. They are going to reflect each other, so it is going to be a little bit redundant, but it, we kind of need to, to, to work through every step. So the, we did row three. It was color B, right? And of course, we did one single crochet into the back loop all the way down. And then, of course, we worked under both loops on the last stitch. As you see, even though this was the lavender color and the lavender is actually represented in the white here, okay, we still followed the empty boxes as back loop single crochets and we used only that color on that row. That'll be the case with every row, okay? So if a row says color A, all the way across it's color A. You We'll understand that more when we start the fourth row, okay? But it doesn't matter what color the boxes are shaded in with, you're going to follow. If it says, if it's a box that's empty, you're gonna put in a back loop single crochet with the color for that row. So you don't need to paint, if you've got very colorful graph and the design is very different, just pay attention to if it's got an X in it or it's empty and which color you are using on that row because all these shaded in areas are doing is showing you the color path. This is going to become clear right away to you. So we're moving to row number four. That is going to be color A, which is once again, our charcoal gray. And we're going to put, um, add the yarn on the first stitch under both loops. And then we're gonna do our first dip down double crochet and you're gonna understand why those front loops are so critical. Okay, so let's, let's just take a look at this pattern. You will wanna refer to it often, okay? But we're gonna pull this on out of the way and go ahead and look at the pattern instruction, okay? So we're going to use color A, which is our charcoal gray, and attach the yarn to the first stitch and I know I'm being a bit repetitive here, all right, but you put it under those first two loops, okay, both loops. You're going to pull up a loop and chain one, insert the hook back under both loops again on the same stitch, pull up another loop and complete a single crochet stitch. So instead of going in to the back loop, we're actually gonna look for the, go down two rows to the previous color A, which is the charcoal gray. Find that next stitch, just go straight down. So there's the previous row, this will be the second row down. And there's that front loop right there, okay? So you're going to do a double crochet. You're going to yarn over, wrap that yarn around. You're going to insert the hook up under that front loop stitch. Pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook and complete your double crochet stitch. Now the instructions say, Repeat the highlighted sequence until there is one stitch, one stitch remaining on the row. The highlighted sequence says one back loop single crochet for the next three stitches, one dip down double crochet the next stitch. You will repeat that highlighted sequence 
until there is one stitch remaining on the row. So from this point on, one, one back loop single crochet for three stitches and then a dip down. Then you come back, one back loop single crochet for three stitches and then a dip down, okay? So let's do that. One back loop single crochet for three stitches, one. Now, if you'll look, I've used this stitch Okay, this is the next stitch. You always want to make sure you're keeping up working into the right stitches or that's going to throw you off, okay? So one, two, three, and then one dip down, double crochet. There's the next stitch. If we go straight down there, right here, is the front loop. I'll pull that up like that, of that stitch, okay? I'm going to do a dip down double crochet into the front loop of that stitch. And then we'll repeat. Three back loop single crochets. One, two, three. Make sure that you're, you're keeping the right stitches. You've, you've used this stitch. Make sure that you're using the next stitch that you're not accidentally picking up this one behind it, okay? Now we've done three back loop single crochets. We want to do a dip down. Remember we're going two rows down to the color A, the previous color A. Then we're going to do three back loop single crochets. This was the back loop. It's one, two, three. Okay. One, two, three. And then a dip down. If we go straight down, it's this stitch right here. So I'm going to pick it up with my claw just to show you how you can do it that way if you find that it's a little tight. All right, and then three again. Back loop single crochets. And then one dip down. Down to there. I have two stitches left we're we repeating until we have one stitch remaining okay repeat the highlighted sequence until there is one stitch remaining on the row this will be the last stitch here okay and it's a three back loops and one back loop single crochet for three stitches and then one dip down okay so we are ending with a dip down all right that is the last repeat and now we end the same way we do it every row by inserting our hook under both loops and completing a single crochet. And then we chain two again. Take that off and cinch it down. That's what you call, we fasten off. We're on row five. All right, so that's color B. And we're going to be working under both loops to add our yarn here, okay? So we're not, we're just gonna disregard the first and last stitch every time. But then we have a back loop single crochet in the next stitch. And then the next three stitches are going to be dip down double crochets. And then we're gonna have a back loop single crochet and then dip down double crochets and then a back loop single crochet. Insert the hook under both loops. Where we always attach the yarn to the first stitch the same way. We're going to pull up a loop. We're going to chain one. Insert the hook back into the same stitch. Now I'm repeating myself. I have to do it anyway. Might as well go for clarity. Then it says one back loop single crochet the next stitch. All right. So we've actually stuck that in the back loop. There's a dip down here. We're actually working that into the back loop of that stitch. All right. Now we want to dip down double crochet the next three stitches. And of course, you should be able to see there's one, two, three front loops right there 
there's a previous row and there's a one underneath it. We're going down two rows to the previous color A, color B, I apologize, the previous color B, and we're gonna dip down, double crochet those three stitches, okay? So let's do that. One, one dip down into that one. There's a second dip down. And the third. And then we do a back loop single crochet in the next stitch. And then we do one dip down, double crochet in the next three stitches again. We're now repeating again. One, two, three. And then we're going to put a back loop single crochet to the next stitch and repeat again. One, two, three, and then a back loop single crochet into the next one. So just continue to do that all the way down and remember that you're going to single crochet into the final stitch under both loops. Okay, so if you've completed row five, this is what it should look like at this point. And I am just going to go ahead and trim up my fringes. I don't like those long dangling fringes hanging off. Remember that on the pattern, if you're working this, this is the side and this is the top and the bottom of the pattern. Okay, so it should look like this. And now we're going to go ahead and move to row six. So let's just go ahead and add our color A to that first stitch right here under both loops. And of course we go right back in again and we complete a single crochet stitch. Now let's go ahead real quick and just peek at the graph. Okay, if we peek at the graph and we go to row six, you can see we're adding the yarn right here. So on the next stitch, we do a dip down, three back loop, a dip down, and three back loop. So the written instructions reflect that entirely. You can choose to look at both if you need that clarity. That's what they're there for. You could just look at the graph or you can read the instructions, whatever works for you, but they should reflect one another exactly. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, we are going to do a deep down double crochet right into that stitch right there. That's our first stitch after we've added. So this is actually our first, but the next stitch we're gonna dip down right here. So we're going to wrap the yarn around, insert the hook under that front loop, Pull up a loop, we've got three loops on our hook. We're going to move through two, move through two and complete that double crochet stitch. And then just like we did in row four, we're going to back loop single crochet into the next three stitches. And then we're going to dip down double crochet because we're repeating. On the repeat is one dip down, three back loop, one dip down, three back loop. So we're going to dip down. Actually, in this case, it's three back loop, one dip down, I believe. Yes, three back loop, one dip down. So one back loop into the next three stitches because I had to actually work this one first because we want to end with the dip down over here. Okay, so we've got three back loop, one dip down, three back loop again. And then we want to do the dip down. And three back loops again. It's so easy, isn't it? 
and then we want to do the dip down. So you can see if you had not worked into the back loop, you wouldn't have these front loops available. You can see why that's so critical now. And we're doing one back loop single crochet into three stitches and then another dip down. If you need to, use that claw. Sometimes, you know, those can kind of get buried up under there like that. One back loop single crochet, the next three stitches. There we go. And then one dip down. Okay. I'm close enough to the end here, might as well just finish, so very quickly. You can always pause that video, hit play when you're ready to resume. No need to rush, take your time. That's my final dip down double crochet on my repeats. And the final stitch right here. And I'm gonna point out to you just as soon as I get this in here, I'm gonna go under both loops, pull that up, complete a single crochet, and I'm gonna fasten off. So now we're going to move on to row seven. Okay, so this is gonna be a little tricky and we need to cover it real quick. Row seven through row 170, okay? Um, we are going to repeat row three through six on that. Now, because this is a tutorial, I'm not gonna ask you to repeat something when you don't have the pattern in front of you. So we're just gonna walk through that setup once again on that, okay? But in the pattern, we are actually, you're actually told to repeat three, four, five, and six. So this is a four row repeat. So this whole pattern will be a four row repeat. You're gonna just repeat these four rows over and over and over again, okay? And then on the final one, you'll have instructions for the final row. And we'll do that. We're not gonna do 170 uh, rows, but this four row repeat um, will be done over and over again until you reach these final rows, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start it again. So we go back to row three again, but you'll notice on the graph, we've actually, have a row seven okay so while the instructions tell you to repeat and now sometimes the graph will be cut off and just a partial graph because that's going to be repeated you'll just get the portion that you need a lot of times it'll say repeat you know row three four five six but it'll go ahead and have those up there so you can kind of see how the transitions are made but it won't do the whole pattern okay so you may say, well, I have to do transitions. I know I repeat. This will just allow you to look and make sure how those transitions are made so you can be sure of it. There's no confusion. But a lot of times you won't have 170 rows. So this graph is really a good example of how you might in a mosaic pattern that repeats not in, have 170 rows or even even possibly all the way across, you know, 203 or four or whatever. So we, though our instructions, our written instructions do tell us just to repeat those rows and they're written up here so for you to look at over and over again if you want. You can also look on the graph and see that on this graph, row seven, we attach our yarn and we don't do any dip downs at all. It's all, single crochet into the back loop. Every bit of it. Okay, let me pull this over here, you can see better. It's all single crochet into the back loop. Blue, I'm on the wrong row, right here. So there are gonna be no dip downs on that row whatsoever. You're just gonna take your collar B and you're gonna single crochet all the way across into the back loop. We're gonna insert our hook under that first loop We're going to add our yarn the same way we do every time. We're going to do it a little quicker this time. Okay. And then I'm going to back. I'm going to 
a, a back loop single crochet every single stitch to the final stitch where I will work under both loops. One back loop single crochet every single stitch to the final stitch. There we go. So you do that. I'm going to pause your video. Once you get to the end of your row, just hit play. And we can visit. Okay, so all the way across, I've done a back loop single crochet. Now I work up under both loops on that final stitch. Flip, loop up and complete that single crochet. And then I fasten off. Same way I've showed you before. We do that every single time. That will not change. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do now is start repeating the pattern. And we're just going to go ahead and do that again so that you can understand what mistakes you don't want to make. Now remember that we're working rows three through six. So to recap it, we've done row three. Okay, we put one back loop single crochet all the way down. That would have actually been row seven. Okay, because we're repeating three, four, five, six. So that would be in the next row. And as you can see, it's all the way down. But that is also row three, which is our first repeat. Also says to back loop single crochet into the next 200, which is basically all of our stitches. So the next one on the repeat, on the full row repeat, is a dip down, um, which will be, we'll add on to the first stitch, and then right here, and then we'll dip down, okay? And then we're going to do um, one back loop single crochet, the next three stitches, and then one dip down the next uh, stitch. And as you can see, those are highlighted, those are repeat stitches. Okay, and of course, if you look at row eight here, which is where we're at, okay, three, four, five, six, and then repeat, one, two, three, four. So we're on row eight, and of course it shows the dip down. You can always highlight if you print out your graph or, or you know, you probably, once you get started, you won't need to do that. But you're gonna have a, a dip down and three back loop, a dip down and three back loop, okay? So that's row eight that we're working. Seven was the first repeat of the full row repeat. We're using color A, and it'll get to the point where you won't even need to look because this will just become so easy, just so repetitive, okay? So we're gonna pull the yarn through. We're adding our yarn to the first stitch. We chained one, pulling up another loop, completing a single crochet, repeating all that, but it has to be done anyway, so might as well just have the clarity. Now we dip down, we're going into this bar right here. Now, I wanted to kind of talk about things you want to avoid doing, okay? Um, you do not want to accidentally dip down into these, all right? You want to be able to maintain the color path, the color pattern that you have. So you don't want to accidentally dip down into these. And when you're working this row here, where you do the single crochet, you're going to do that over and over again throughout. Don't accidentally go into this. Because if you were to dip down into these after you completed those squares, it would just keep going up in one solid stripe. Okay, so you don't want to do that either. So you want to be sure when you're first starting and just keep everything clear about where you're doing it. It's not hard, it's very, very easy, but you know, you can't accidentally just keep dipping down into places you should not. So you wanna be real diligent in paying attention to that. So we're gonna back loop single crochet those next three stitches. Wow. There we go. Into the back loop only, leaving the front loop exposed. And then we're gonna dip down into this bar. Okay, and then we're gonna back loop, single crochet, the next three stitches. And then we're gonna dip down into this bar. Now you can use your hook if you want. If you find it hard to grab. Dip down. This is actually back loop, and then dip down. Oops. 
back loop three, dip down one, back loop three, and then dip down one. Go ahead and complete your row. You can hit pause um, if you need to catch up and then hit play when you're ready to resume. And this is what it should look like while you're working. Okay, so I have completed that row. This is what it should look like. You should have fringe on these sides and you should have these narrow three back loop single crochet lavender strips here. And we're actually going to be dipping down this time to form another set of squares like that, okay? So that's why it's important that you don't actually dip down. We're just going straight up over the top of that gray. There'd be no division at all. And so you need to be really careful that you're keeping your lines straight. It's not accidentally uh, working into the wrong stitches. So let's just go ahead now and add our lavender. And we're going to just repeat what we've been doing all along. So we're going to add that yarn. Now I am just going to show you, it's easy to see. You've got the bar coming up here, okay? And you're only working your laver, lavender in to make the squares. So we're just gonna back loop single crochet into that bar. All right, and then you're going to dip down into the previous two rows back lavender color color b and you're going to do that double crochet dip down double crochet into the next three stitches one into each stitch so say one dip down double crochet next three stitches that's so one two three and then one back loop single crochet and the reason i didn't look at the pattern this time is because this is just a repeat of everything we've already done okay so we're just going again we've done the back loop over the bar so we're going to do a dip down double crochet into the next three stitches one into each stitch and then we're going to do one back loop single crochet into the next stitch one dip down double crochet into the next three stitches continue to do that all the way down it should look like this while you're working it okay and then we'll see you when you get to the end now remember this is just a four row repeat we are just repeating everything that we did before and we are now on the fourth repeat on this row and that is going to be color a all right so if you look here where it says repeat row three through row six row six is color a all right and that's where it begins so we begin with color b color a color b color a okay so we end with color a so this is the fourth of the four row repeat which we will do over and over again so what i'm going to have you do is go through this one more time and then i'm going to talk you through it and have you build this up to the desired length i am going to do uh, six total um, sets of squares okay so I'm gonna go ahead and build it up four more times after this so uh, I'll let you decide how big you want it but do remember that we're going to put a double-sided border on this after we finish it off so go ahead and build yours up with the repeats it'll be a four row repeat and it begin with color A. So this is the final repeat row. All right, we've added our yarn. I need to go ahead and finish off the single crochet. Okay, and then we're going to dip down into this bar. We're gonna leave these bars going up all the way. All right, so wrap your yarn, go into that front loop, pull up a loop and complete a double crochet. You're gonna go into the back loop, pull up a single crochet, and 
next three stitches one back loop single crochet next three stitches then we're going to do a dip down double crochet on that bar for the next stitch and we're just going to alternate back and forth one back loop single crochet the next three stitches in the next stitch and then a back loop single crochet in the next three stitches and then a dip down double crochet in the next stitch so go ahead and finish that hit pause and then hit play when you're ready to resume. So I'm back again with my completed swatch and I've done six sets of one, two, three, four, five, six. This is where we started. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one more row of single crochet into the back loop up here because we're getting ready to put the border on and that will finish it off. So just be aware that, you know, because you've started it here, prepped it here, you're gonna kinda need to build this top up too an even border because remember this is your side okay so you're going to have a border around it you're going to be working it all the way around um, but you do want to go ahead um, and build this last edge up so we're going to do that with our color a and so what it wants you to do if you haven't already is to place your hook under the first stitch just like you would add your yarn the same way that you've learned in the tutorial to do and go ahead and complete an entire row um, under the back loop single crochet under the back loop all the way across and then go ahead and fasten off when you're done and we'll begin the border okay so I have completed the final row of my pattern and remember we're just working a swatch here and I could actually leave the fringe here and complete it that way. Now, these are really close together, these two ends, so it makes the fringe look a little awkward. But if you have a big blanket with it separated and it's full size, this fringe can actually look quite nice. But in this case, it's because I have actually worked from one side to the other side, which put the fringe at top and bottom. If I had worked this <clears throat> mosaic pattern from the bottom to the top, the fringe would have come out from the side, on each of the sides. And that looks odd and a lot of people don't like it for that reason. So when I do a mosaic pattern that can be worked from side to side, that's what I do. Because this fringe at top and bottom works really well. Now if in the event that I want to do a pattern and it just can't be worked side to side, what you can do, and that's what we're going to learn now, is add a double-sided border and that will conceal your fringe so I'm going to show you how to do that because you need that information if you're going to work mosaic projects and they are stunning so it's totally worth it to learn now the important thing that you need to know and I'm going to teach you my preference on this because I just think I'm right so you find a different way of doing it you're welcome to go with that but I believe that borders on any any project even garments should be placed away from the edge. I think that they're very unsightly when you try to work a border in on the edge. It just, it pulls, it causes gaps. It sometimes is very uneven and it's just a bad idea. So I put all of my borders one stitch back from the edge. Doesn't matter what side we're on. If we're gonna go all the way around, it'll be one stitch back from the edge all the way around. So in this case, the edge stitch is right here. And so if we will go back one stitch from the edge, that is of course this stitch. Let me pull it out and show you right here. The same on this side. There's the edge stitch. If I want to go back one stitch from the edge, that stitch is going to be right here or to put it in front of it. Either way, that's gonna be one stitch back, okay? So we're gonna work those stitches. We're gonna start with a slip stitch and we're gonna work that border 
from one stitch back from the edge all the way around. It's gonna be more secure and the way we're gonna do it, it's gonna look really nice. And it's gonna conceal the fringe. So even if you wanna leave it on this project, if you like doing mosaic, you're probably going to want to know how to do a double-sided border. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to work from the back side. Now the reason we're going to work from the back side is because on mosaic, we change colors every other row. And this makes it less likely that you are going to accidentally um, put your stitches in an in uneven pl placement. You're going to actually be working one stitch back so there's the edge stitch if you move back that's right here and those are so easy to see in this pattern because every one of them are pretty obvious so you're not going to have trouble finding that stitch one stitch back okay it just really stands out so it's going to be quite easy to put, to put your um slip stitches in along these edges and then of course over here you're going to do the same thing you're going to move back one stitch so we're not going to actually start on the corner i know that that's where most people um, like to start um, if they're new but in this tutorial we're actually going to pick any spot that isn't the corner okay so we're going to slip stitch into it you're going to create a slip knot and i'm putting it in there yet and it's too soon we're going to create a slip knot and then we're going to find a spot inward okay and we won't be working this way because we're working actually one stitch back from the edge so we're going to be working this way so go in behind your fringe and find any stitch that you want to work with that is not in the corner it doesn't matter where you can even start two stitches over you know here in the in the lavender you sleeve that would actually be uh, one stitch in and then three more stitches so you can start anywhere along this edge that you want as long as it's not in a corner okay you're going to insert your hook into the stitch and bring it through to the other side okay so you've got it coming in from the top like this we're working on the back side so you're going to have it coming in like this and bring it through to the other side and then you're going to take your slip knot and be sure you're not grabbing the tail that you you're, you're actually have a hold of the main piece because that's what you're going to be using you're going to pull that slip knot through to the surface once you have the slip knot on the surface you may just have to move that fringe out of the way we st i started on lavender you can start on any color you want but from there on we're just going to be moving from the uh right to the left or if you're left-handed the other direction you're going to be moving over one stitch um, with with each time that you insert your hook so you're going to go over in this case i started on lavender so i am actually going to put my hook into the next color which will be the next row over and again try not to grab that tail and i'm going to pull up another loop now i'm going to slip stitch that loop through the first one now i'm going to go to the next color the next row and I'm going to pull the loop and then I'm going to pull that loop through the first one and then I'm going to go to the next row the next color make sure you're not going into the edge you're staying one stitch back insert your hook pull up a loop and pull that through and slip stitch go to the next color insert it with the next row pull up a loop, pull it through, and then slip stitch. Okay. So we want to do this all the way down. You're going to just keep that fringe out of the way. You probably have to fiddle with it a bit, but it's okay because you're not actually um, stitching these at all. Go into the next one and do the same. Insert your hook front to back, pull up a loop, slip stitch. Insert your hook front to back, pull up a loop, and slip stitch. Insert the hook into the stitch front to back, pull up a loop, and slip stitch. Okay, now in a minute, we're going to take care of this fringe. We're going to kind of um, trim it down a bit. 
You can actually do that before you start, but it's okay if you do it now because these stitches are actually clear of that fringe, so it does not matter. Go ahead and finish your um, slip stitches. You're gonna be actually working all the way. So we're at the last stitch now, and instead of trying to work into the edge of that because I've already worked that stitch, I'm gonna come up under like this and go ahead and go into the stitch between those two stitches. I'm just gonna go in there somewhere underneath that first slip stitch and pull up a another loop slip stitch it i am going to now coming over the top of of this fringe because it's going to be covered anyway okay i'm going to chain two i'm going to clip that off pull that up and cinch it down now it is true that we've just come over the edge when we've been working right in the center but this will get covered the, what we did though was we maintained an even edge of slip stitches all the way around and we didn't put stress onto these edges. They just don't look as nice when you do that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and clip this off and remember that I told you that when these aren't be touched by that. So what you can do now, you can leave them the size that they are if you've cut them really short already. And I'm just gonna clip that, that off. We don't want that in the way. But you can also cut them down to where they're only about a half inch long, okay? And just all the fringe, you can just trim it so it's only a half inch long. So once I put all of my slip stitches all the way around, I went ahead and cut these down to a half an inch. Now I do want to tell you that if you feel like those aren't going to be secure, like they're going to come loose at some point, you can always tie two together and I double knot them if that's the case. You can leave them longer and then you're going to have to conceal them in between the two borders um, size of sandwich them in but that can actually create some extra bulk in there and it's not always an attractive look so if you can just cut them down to about a half inch it's better to tie them together if you can do that um and not two together if you don't feel like they're secure in my case i feel like they are um and this is just a swatch so we're not going to do that with this one but i have trimmed them and you'll probably want to do the same Okay, so now we are actually going to be working what was a dip down double crochet that covered two rows each. And we worked from side to side, but these dip down double crochets, of course, move in this direction. But now that we're working them and we're working along the edge, they're kind of horizontal. And we put our slip stitches into the back. So you're going to have slip stitches. They're only going to be a single loop, but they're actually going to be in this work as well. So if you can't find them, you will need to just put two uh, work uh, the stitches in, two stitches in, because these are two rows high. You'll need to be sure and you put two double crochet stitches for each one of these. But you should actually be able to find two loops for each. And if you don't, don't worry about it, because like I said, um, you can always just work two into one if you absolutely have to. It's not ideal. It doesn't look as nice. And you should be able to find that extra loop in there. As you can see here, we have, because of the slip stitches, we have plenty of little loops on the front side to pick, uh, choose from. So you've got one there, and then you've also, you can work one in right here. And that actually covers both of them. And you can see how tight those are, which is why once we pull this, okay, let's just pull this see if it does then it's going to put pressure and tension on the stitches back here that's why we didn't want to work it in here because it's going to add too many stitches on the front and it's also going to pull against this and make it harder to work and if you would worked it on this side you only have a single loop i know i've explained that but it just i'm just trying to make you understand the importance of working those from the other side so what we've got this um, slip stitch over here because this is our dip down of course right here so we've got this extra stitch here but we're going to save that for when we come back around we're going to find a stitch um, in the center here and like i said with the slip stitches being put in you should have plenty of loops to choose from you're going to want two stitches for every one of these dip down double crochets to add it you're going to pull up a loop with your yarn just like you're adding yarn in the uh, project you were working you're going to chain one and instead of putting it straight back in you're going to wrap and then insert the hook and complete a double crochet stitch okay 
Now you notice I'm just gonna go ahead and bury this. It's just gonna make things a lot easier. Okay, so then I'm gonna find the next loop available and I need to be using two loops and not on this side of it, not close to the body, but up here um, toward the edge is where we wanna pick those loops up. We wanna leave the loops back here alone, okay? So we're gonna actually find the next loop. We want to work two double crochet for each one of these dip downs. And they look horizontal now, but each one of these, we want to be working two double crochet into it. We want to be doing it through separate loops if we can. If you absolutely must, you can put two into one loop but it's not gonna look as nice. So I'd advise you to try not to do that if you can keep from it. You should be able, you should be able to, to with the slip stitches and the dip down double crochets that you did, that you're working into, you should not have to work underneath um, two, two stitches into one. And don't, don't work them like this, okay? We don't wanna work them like that because that's not gonna look good. You want to find the loop on the top toward the edge and grab that okay so we've done two for that one and now we're actually going to move to the next one which is going to be right here so i'm going to wrap and i'm going to find that loop and if you have to use your claw to get it you can do that it doesn't seem to want to respond to the claw either so i've used my fingernail to slide it up under there remember slip stitches can be a little bit on the tight side so when you're grabbing a slip stitch you may actually have to kind of wiggle it in, maneuver it in. So there's the next one. And some of these are actually the loops from the dip down double crochets, but it does not matter. Two for each dip down double crochet. Remember they're, they're horizontal now, but, but they are the, the stitches that you work consistently down the edge in the vertical, um, you know, for two rows. Okay, so we're, putting two in for each one, and we're trying to make sure that we're actually pulling up those slip stitch uh, loops if we can to do that. There you go. So I'm gonna get you to the other side. I'm gonna show you how to do the corner, get you to the other side, and then I'm gonna let you work it from there all the way around. So that's how you're gonna be doing that edge there, okay? And you notice those bottom loops, we haven't touched those, those are still in place, okay? We'll leave those there. So go to the next one, and that loop is gonna be a little tight, so you just kind of force it in there, work it in real careful, and go to the next one. And just make sure you're, you can, okay, we don't wanna go up under it, so you wanna be sure that you're actually pulling up that top loop. So I make it a little tricky from time to time. If you have to use your claw again, you can work it. I think I actually worked it loose with the claw and got, so I could get it under there. There we go. And this is actually going to be the hardest part of it. Once you've done this, it gets real easy. So if you're sitting there going, what a nightmare, be assured that some of the, once you actually get on the side, that's gonna be real easy. So this is just gonna be a temporary, you know, thing that you have to fiddle with. Once you've done that, you know, you're free and clear. All right. Up under that loop, there you go. And like I said, you put slip stitches in, so those should be available to you, so you do not need to go up under the whole thing. You should have loops available for each one of those dip downs. And I am covering up the excess tail that I had when I added that yarn in. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip it off because we've covered it from here to here. That should do it just fine because it's woven in. So now I'm gonna go up under the next loop. I'm gonna get you to the corner, show you how to do the corner. And then of course you'll be able to see how easy that other side is. There go. Now, we're at the corner, 
and we're going to find the stitch in the corner. You can do your best to find a corner stitch here. And I've got one right here. I just got to pull it out, pull it out. Okay, here we go. And I am going to put three double crochet stitches into that corner. Make sure. There we go. Be sure you're putting them actual into an actual stitch, okay? And that you're putting all three into the same stitch. So you're gonna have to put three double crochet into each corner stitch. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna turn around and you're gonna start working into the front loops on that side. You're gonna work into every front loop a double crochet stitch. This is going to be so easy. So you're gonna pick up that front loop one row down, okay, one row down from your edge. All right. You don't even have to worry about slip stitches on this one. Just pick that up. One row down from your edge, you're going to pick up that front loop. Go ahead and do that one over. There we go. Again. So very quickly, we're just zipping right along on this side. There we go. So these are actually quite easy. You're not going to have a lot of trouble with those. Just putting double crochets into the front edge of them, okay? So you're gonna do that all the way around. I'm gonna leave this loop right here on that. And that's actually gonna be okay because that matches with the other loops that you've put in here. So it, it works really well with the pattern, as you can see. It's real straight. So you're gonna draw that all the way around. When you get to your corner, you are going to find the corner stitch. In this case, it will be right here. You're going to put three double crochet into that stitch and then you're going to move back across here being sure that each one of these dip down double crochets that covered two rows that you're putting a double crochet into two stitches for each one of the dip downs okay and you and you should be able to find a slip stitch and a stitch for your dip down double on each one so you go ahead and do that and when you get all the way around to here where you started then you're going to stop and we'll resume so you'll just go ahead and pause and hit play when you're ready okay so i have come all the way around to the other side and we have fringe here by the way now that will stick up a little bit so what we usually do on this is we usually put two uh, layers on the border um, I'm not going to do it in this one simply because one, it's such a small swatch that it wouldn't actually give you the effect visually that you that would be pleasing to you anyway. So we're gonna I'm gonna show you what you would do with them if they were taller anyway. We're just gonna leave it at one. But do know that normally when you got to this other side, you would go ahead and you know slip stitch into this not the next one but the one after. Okay. And then you would just go ahead and begin your double crochet stitches again all right and in this case you can go ahead now and put them under both loops all right and you would just continue to go all the way around and that's going to be really tall for the size swatch that we have but you do too with a full size blanket it would look better if you did two okay so you do two layers all the way around we're gonna go ahead though and stop there. We've put that in there like that. I'm gonna go back and go under both loops so it doesn't pull. There we go, slip stitch it. Chain two. And you're working that in with your yarn needle when you finish. If you bury it in between, the two layers then of course you'll have another one on the other side so you'll end up needing a yarn needle for a finished product a project regardless 
you probably won't need one in this tutorial, but it, it will be a necessity at some point. Now we're gonna turn it over to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing. And again, on a full size bucket, you want two, actually two rows of double crochet all the way around. So two rounds of double crochet. But um, we're not going to do that on this one either. We're gonna start somewhere in the middle, avoid those corners again. And this time we're gonna go up under that slip stitch. We're gonna go under both, okay? Under both loops on the slip stitch. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're going to pull up a loop, chain one, and then we're going to wrap, insert our hook up under that same loop and complete a single crochet stitch. Now we're gonna to go to the next one. We don't have to worry about two in one on this one because we've actually done a slip stitch in every stitch on this side. And of course that would have put loops on the other side. So we're gonna go ahead now and just go under every single one of these with a double crochet stitch. And make sure we're not skipping any or that we're not putting two in one. One double crochet stitch under both loops of every slip stitch. Now, if it looks a little uneven, it shouldn't. You should be perfectly even if you went into the stitches with the slip stitch. If you slip stitch the way I showed you. Okay. This is probably just needs to relax so that it looks, it, but it will be even. It should be perfectly even. So we'll take a look at that, that in a moment. As I said, we're just right now just getting up under those and we're going to get to the corner. And I'll let you have a look at what this should look like. Now, you may get these yarns that pull through. And you'll just have to pull them out of the way, okay? Make sure they stay in between the two borders. Okay, so you have a border on this side and a border on this side. And just make sure that your yarns aren't getting caught you know and pulling through on this side you want to make sure and just keep them if they get stuck in a stitch just kind of eat gently very gently just work it out okay let's go to the next stitch and i'm really having to work these so if i kind of glide off the screen off center then just please forgive me. I'll get back on there as soon as I realize what I've done. And of course, I'm talking you through it as we go as well. There we go. Okay, that stitch does not look good, so I'm going to do it again. Go back under there again. There we go. There we go. And just all the way. Around. I want to get to the corner here and I'm going to leave it with you and then let you finish it and then we'll come back and show you how we top that off. Now do you see right there how we've got that, that yarn pulling kind of peeking through there? I think that's it. Yeah, that got rid of it. So you may have to fiddle with some of those that want to, to pull through and show through. Um, just do your best to keep them out of the way. I'm kind of bending that back and pinning those back like this so that they don't slip in to the stitches. Okay. And see how tight those would have been if you'd only had one um, stitch there and you were trying to dig that out, that would have been a nightmare. So that's why we went ahead and did the the, uh, the slip stitch on this side so that we'd have both of those would be a little stouter a little easier to find and a little easier to work under so when we get to the corner we're going to do exactly what we did before and that was our corner stitch actually and i put one in already so we're going to put three into that corner stitch so it's going to be two and then three once you've put three stitches into the corner stitch just like you did on the other side then you're going to come and turn the work and begin working the next side 
there we go that and there won't be any fringe on this side so you won't have to worry about that now, sometimes when you pull it it stretches that that stitch up real high and you kind of have to pull it back down the next one next so you're going to do that all the way around now it's going to be super easy once you get that round done so you have to do two rounds of this on a full-size project i've got one of those sticking through there so we're going to pull that out there we go you're going to have two rounds of double crochet on a full-size project and so when you do that um it's going to be real easy up here because you're not going to be messing with any slip stitches or trying to work, you know, fiddle with the fringe or anything like that. So when I say that you have to do two rounds of this, you're, if you're struggling with your slip stitches, you're struggling to get them in, remember, that's one round. The second round where you stack another uh, double crochet, row, uh, round of double crochet stitches up here, that's easy because you're just going to be working under these like you would in regular crochet and you'll be putting your three um double crochet stitches in the corner but in this tutorial we're just going to do the one because i'm going to show you how it closes off and do remember that you'll get a flatter nicer effect with two rounds um but so just remember you'll want to stack them up two rounds of double crochet before you seal it off but I am going to get us around to the next side and just show you how to seal it off, okay? And that'll be actually how that double um, sided border comes together, you'll see. And, and then of course you'll know that instead of doing one round of double crochet, you'll need to do two on each side. So go ahead and work your way around, three double crochet in each corner, and I'll see you when you get to your starting point. Okay, so I finished putting one round of double crochet on every side. Let's kind of see how that looks. Looks really nice. Good back side. See how nice that looks. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna join them together. And in order to do that, we're just gonna slip stitch them together. Now do remember that you're going to need on a full size blanket to put two rounds of double crochet on there. I'm actually saving time on this tutorial by not doing that for you. Also, it would be disproportionate, so it wouldn't look nearly as nice as it will look on a full-size blanket. So you're kind of getting the effect on this smaller swatch because the proportions would be similar to this, so you get a better view of how nice that will look. Get a big blanket, tall, uh, two rounds of, of double crochet. It'll work really well with this fringe. As you can see, we have fringe sticking out. We're going to have to kind of smooth it in there. You won't have to do that with two rounds, but it will look a lot better. So hopefully that makes sense to you. But let's just go ahead and join those. I don't want to do it on the corner. I'm going to kind of start over on the side like I did before, and I'm going to stick that through underneath two loops. I'm not going to do it under one to join them. I'm going to put it under two loops, and then I'm going to go to the other side. Make sure that you're not putting it through the center portion here, because remember, we want one stitch back. So you want to actually make sure that you've got the other border side. It'll be easier when you have actually two rounds of double crochet. You won't be as likely to make that mistake. All right. And you're going to pull your yarn through both. You're going to chain one. You're going to insert your hook back through, pull up a loop, and slip stitch. Go to the next one. Make sure that you're going through each stitch and slip stitch. Now you're just going to slip stitch all the way around. Now I know we're just slip stitching, but I'm going to go ahead and do this to the corner and across the other side so that you can see what how we work that fringe in. Now do remember that if you had done two rows of double crochet, that fringe would easily conceal. You would probably not have to smooth it down, but there have been cases when I did. So it's just good for you to see in case you run into that, what you would have to do. Two rounds of double crochet, however, would have easily concealed all this fringe. But again, now if you want to do these just one side, you know, each on these, one, one um, loop each on each side, you can. I do mine through both because I just feel like it's more secure. I just feel like it pulls it all together really nice. But you may feel like it looks nicer in your view 
So this is just as long as you're slip stitching it closed. That's the thing. Just slip stitch it closed, going through both sides. I like to go under both loops. Okay, and I'm almost to the, the other edge. So make sure you're going not through the center of the stitch because those are double crochets. But you're actually going up under the two loops. Go. together all the way around to make sure that we're lining those stitches up we go corner to corner here we go on that other edge this is what I wanted to show you okay see how those are sticking up you'll just kind of smooth them down now when you have the two rounds of double crochet on there um, it's going to be a lot easier to conceal them. You're not going to have to mess with it nearly as much. They probably will even stick up high enough for it to be an issue. All right. But just in case you do have something that wants to kind of poke its head up, that's how you do it. You just kind of smooth it down and pull those together. And you'll just do it as you go. Okay, so I'm going through two sides there and two sides there. Okay. And I've come to, whoop, I've lost that stitch. Let's go back in and do it again. Okay. Come to another one here where it's wanting to stick up. So again, I'm just going to smooth it down in there. Insert my hook in and just continue to slip stitch it. All the way around. And you're just going to do each of the stitches on the corner the same way. Because you're only going to slip stitch it the once. There's no reason to build it up or anything of that nature. You're just going to close it all up with a slip stitch. There we go. So you go ahead and do yours. And then I'll see you when you reach the other side. And I'll show you how to finish that off. What we're going to do is we're going to take our yarn needle. We're going to insert, and I don't know what kind of yarn needle you have. There's two different kinds you ha may have. We're going to insert, and I don't know what kind of yarn needle you have. There's two different kinds. You ha may have the ones that collapse like this, um, you know, or you may have the ones with the little um, hooks on them. So I'm just, I'm going to go ahead and use the collapsible one, and I'm going to put my yarn through that. I'm going to start with this one first. Okay, and I am just going to pull this through like that. Now, it's on my hook. Now, I'll be clipping part of this yarn off, but I'm going to go ahead and bring it on up so that I can bury plenty of it. And I am just going to go into these stitches. I'm just going to work right through the middle here. Okay. All right. And I'm just going to work them in. Can even do several stitches at once. Pull that through and just continue to work it right through the middle of these stitches. Okay, it doesn't matter how you do it as long as you bury them. Okay, um, there we go. So it's getting too short to work now, so I'll just clip that off right there. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. All right, this time I'll use the hook in for you. Put the hook end in, grab the yarn, slip it into the hook. It's gonna now it's gonna jerk a little. Okay, I'm gonna pull that through. And I am just I'm gonna go the opposite direction this time. Okay, I'm just gonna insert my hook into these like that and just right down the center and pull that through. And I'll just go ahead and clip that off right there. So there you go. You can kind of see a little better now what you've got there on the front side 
And like I said, if, if it had been two uh, rows, it wouldn't all be crammed in there quite so tight. So this little bit of bulk would smooth out a bit. All right. But it's all, everything's just crammed in between there, like because I only did one round instead of two. But still all the same, it looks very nice. It conceals that yarn and of course the same on the other side. All right. So that's how you do a double-sided border and how you work the mosaic square pattern. You do a whole blanket. Of course, it's going to take you a lot longer, but it's so easy. You're just using double crochet and single crochet, as you saw. And again, if you want the pattern, you can go to woollyfay.wordpress.com and everything you need, all of the links are available on that site where you can check for Wooly Fay on Ravelry or Etsy. That pattern is only $2.50. It is probably the simplest pattern on my site because I do a lot of mosaic and tapestry. But with that said, um, if you just want a copy, you can, you can get it really cheap. So don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you the next time.